On the 2020 AP Macro FRQ, this is the one off of my AP Classroom. We've got France and Italy making grapes and tomatoes. So remember we're going to try and set these up just like they're asked so it's easy for the grader to see everything. We have 100 and 100 and 25 and 50. Now I can use this box right here to go and set it, everything up and I know that this they are producing in a day using the same amount of resources. To me, this is an output question. That's an output question. So I'm going to do my other goes over. And I want to get it to terms of one so I can solve for comparative or um, absolute advantage if I need to. Question A, does France, Italy, or neither nation have a comparative advantage in producing grapes? There's that key word, explain. So that means more points. Now, I'll go over here and I'll say, what does one grape equal to in terms of tomatoes. Let's zoom in for you. So one grape in terms of tomatoes. So if the other, remember it's grapes, I'm wanting to solve for, the other goes over. So the other thing is at 25. So I know if 25 goes over 100, that's going to be one fourth of a tomato. And when we look at France as far as what does Ha what does it cost them when they make one tomato and can get my reciprocal of one-fourth I know it's going to cost four grapes. I'm going to do the same thing for Italy now. One grape is equal to and then other going over so I know 50 on top of 100 is going to be a half of a tomato. I can set this one up now. One tomato is equal to I got my reciprocal and then double check myself real quick. 100 going on top of 50. Remember to be like this. That'd be the other one going over. So 100 over 50 is going to be 2. So my reciprocal still holds true. And now looking at this, who has the lowest opportunity cost? A half or a fourth? Well, France has lower opportunity cost in terms of Every time they make a grape, they could make one-fourth of a tomato. So they would be the maker of the grapes. Over here, tomatoes. Who should make them? Who has the lowest opportunity cost? That would be Italy. Because every time they make a bushel of tomatoes, or it costs them the chance with the same resources to make two grapes, or bushels of grapes, whatever they have it on here. Yeah, bushels of tomatoes, bushels of grapes. Okay. Now, part A, does France, Italy, or neither have comparative advantage in grapes? So if they're asking about grapes, let's look over here at grapes. That one's lower. So France has comparative advantage in grapes. All right, explain. Well, let's see, for them, Every time they choose to make one grape, they give up the chance to make one-fourth of a tomato. And Italy has one grape equals to a half of tomatoes. So one-fourth is less than one-half opportunity cost in the production of making the grapes. So that is why. Now you can write this sentence out a lot longer. I'm really doing this for you students at home. Now let's look at part B. What does that tell us? Assume France and Italy decide to specialize in trade according to their comparative advantages and 20 bushels of grapes are exchanged for 8 bushels of tomatoes. Are specialization in trade under these terms beneficial to both France and Italy? Explain. Well, the way I like to do that, I'm going to say, well, 20 grapes. This is my term of trade. So my term of trade is 20 grapes for 8 tomatoes. Now, is this going to work? Well, let's see. If France does one grape, for one-fourth of a tomato. Let's take what happens if they do 20 grapes. Well, if they do 20 grapes, that's going to be 1 to 20, and 20 times a fourth is going to be 5 tomatoes. 
So they could make 20 tomatoes and trade it for eight grapes. Or they could make 20 grapes and trade it for eight tomatoes. Or if they do it themselves, they would make 20 grapes or five tomatoes. So this is a plus three for them. So that's a good deal for France. Now Italy, let's look at it the same way. If they make one tomato, that would equal to two grapes. Now what if they decide to make eight tomatoes? So we can check out this trade. That would equal to, let's see, one, that would have to multiply by two, so eight times two be 16 grapes. Well, that would be a plus four if they took their eight tomatoes and traded it for 20 grapes on the terms of trade. So that plus four looks good for both of them. Now, if we need to write this out, make it all fancy, our specialization trade under these terms beneficial to both France and Italy explain, then you would take this and say, well, they are both better off. than doing it themselves, okay? Don't mind the handwriting, I'm really doing it to show you how I calculated all this stuff. That's one way you can do it. And if another way you wanted to do it was where you talked about um, what decimal point it needs to lie between. And if you need to do that, then you'd look at, well, it needs to be something between 0.25 and 0.5. So if I take 20 divided by eight, um, that would give me 0.4, and 0.4 does lie in between that, so that's a good deal. So, 8 bushels of tomatoes, 20 bushels of grapes, 20 to 8 ratio ends up being a 1 to 0.4. So, we can definitely live with that if we have to. Now, let's see here. Oh. Sorry about that. I had my video off on the wrong spot. Okay, now, part C. Suppose the productivity in labor of, oh, sorry, I'm right here. Suppose the productivity, productivity of labor in the production of grapes and tomatoes in France doubles. All right, so anytime you see that, let's just do that part first. So in France, so I know it's France, we got grapes and tomatoes. So grapes, in France, they go from 100 to 200, and tomatoes, they go from oh, 25 and to 50. So this is how I'm just kind of working things out in my head right now, and then on paper, so I can plan. Now I got this part done, this little math. Assuming France experiences constant opportunity cost in the production of both things, draw France's production possibility curves, the grapes on the horizontal axis, and tomatoes on the vertical axis. Plot the numerical values on the graph and show the effect of doubling labor productivity. Well, we can do that. So let's just make a PPC right here for France. So when they first start out, they're going to be making 125. Bam, that's my PPC1. They didn't tell us to do that, but we did. Why not? So then we're going to have this one. Let's double everything. So that's going to be 200, and that's going to be 50. And now we have our second PPC. So that one right there, that one right there. And that's really all they asked us to do right there. They don't say explain, anything like that. It just says to draw it. So cool, we will draw it. All right, now... Let's go over here or down here and do part D. Remember A, B, C, D, do it just like they had it on here. Will the doubling of labor productivity in France change France's absolute advantage, change its comparative advantage, or change neither? Explain. Always either circle or underline because you know you're going to have to go for points. So I look up here. When it comes to grapes, no one has absolute advantage. Bushels of tomatoes, Italy has absolute advantage. So what are they asking for? Will it change France's absolute advantage, its comparative advantage, or neither? Explain. Well, then let's explain. What are we explaining? Well, we are going to explain. Let me move stuff around over here. All right. So, they will now, France will now 
have absolute advantage in grapes because it went from 100 to 200 and that 200 is greater than Italy's 100 so that's going to give them absolute advantage in the production of in the production of grapes now is it going to change their comparative advantage no is it going to change their absolute advantage in tomatoes? Oh, well, I forgot about that part. So now they're going to be even at 50 and 50 on tomatoes. So absolute advantage will not change for them. They'll just be even. So they didn't gain absolute advantage in tomatoes. So we would write no absolute in tomatoes because 50 equals 50. So no one has that. Now when it comes to comparative advantage, no change. Triangle means change. Because when they went from 125 to 250, the ratios stayed the same. So anytime you see that one trick question where their productivity doubles or triples or anything like that, it's not going to change the ratio because that would still be one grape for a fourth of tomato and still be one tomato for four grapes. And that is how they are going to stay. So that's the 2020 FRQ. Zoom out so if you need to you can pause that and get a clear picture of it.